Hey, hey, hey! Is this live? Can people hear me? Please let me know. That'd be great. This is always this is always the, the nerve-wracking bit of the stream where I'm like waiting. With, ah, there we go, Amiga Man Raymond. It's just right there for me and saying that it's live. Excellent. You can hear me, you can see me. Good start. I've lost some hair since yesterday, as you can probably tell. Um, for those who pay attention to such things, um, I got my hair cut after, um, let me say, <laughs> a year and a half of not cutting it. So um, it's so much lighter, which is very nice. Um, and I'm also wearing Ben's like rope because it was quite cold in here, but I'm sure that will, uh, with, when I stream it always gets really warm in here, so I'm sure that will uh, not be required in a minute. Hi Amiga Man, hi Brick Dude Lego, how are you doing? Long time no see. Um, and Michael as well, how is everybody this evening? Um, basically, I don't normally stream twice a week, but I needed to finish this build. So we're going to do the, um, uh, what's it called? I've lost the name. The Three Broomsticks pub today because I need to finish it. I was like, look, I started this thing yesterday. I've got to have to like go on stream to finish it. It's just required. So here we are, um, ready to do that straight away. Um, also, I'm feeling much better. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, I'm less sniffly. I don't want to like, like, just touching wood here, but um, I'm doing better. Thank you all for like the lovely well wishes. Um, I know it was a bit silly of me to stream yesterday, but I really just needed to interact with some people and have some Lego time. So um, I actually had quite a lot of Lego time today as well. I ended up um, doing my, so I started building the alternate build, the European Jazz Cafe. Um, I, I mean, I started a little while ago, but I just continued and I had my laptop still here because all my streaming setup was still in this room from yesterday. So I was just watching Friends, um, like reruns of Friends. I basically watched the entire first season whilst building Lego, which I have to say, it was it was kind of like one of those things of like, oh man, I wish I could do that when you're like at work. So um, I, had a, I had a nice day, really relaxed. So apart from getting my hair cut, I didn't actually do many intense things, apart from that I decided last minute about six o'clock that I wanted to stream this evening so I could finish the, like, the, the three broomsticks. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Blocksmith Forge. I like it too. Hi, Rosie. How are you doing? Hi, James, Minister of Making. I'm glad you all made it today. ODJ. I always say this in Dutch. I'm so sorry. OD ODJ. It's just the Dutch as a me that always like makes it hard. What's your actual name, please? That probably will make it a bit easier. Um, hi, Tommy Rich. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm gonna dive straight in. Let's get this started. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot actually. This first bag straight away comes with a recolor of the hair that I use for my sig fig. So um, my sig fig is just over here having some coffee. But yeah, so it's the recolor of the hair that I use. Um, I feel like because of my haircut, my hair actually looks more like this again, even though it's not as long. Um, because when it was getting, it was getting really long, like it was like to here, and it was starting to get really straight. So actually, uh, I look more like my sig fig again <laughs> after cutting it. Um, but it's really cool to have this recolor. It's a very nice color, and also her torso is really cool actually. I'm loving all these new like prints and mini figs. Um, she does have the same face that they use for Bellatrix in the burrow. Um, which is one of the very few fixes I've actually made to um, sets. So because we got Bellatrix in the CMF series recently and her face and that was much better, I changed her face um, around on the, on the... I got basically an extra Bellatrix and I just used a new face on the um, burrow set because that was just much more accurate. So Madame R Rismerta can be very angry with you. Pay for your pints, I would recommend. So there she is. Where is her leg? Where is her leg? Don't worry, I'll, I'll check the chat in a minute after I've um, unpacked this set and got it all out. Out in the open and I found her legs. There we go. Madame Rosmerta, first three broomstick minifigure. Another, another one that you haven't had before. Loving all these new people. Um, there we go. Hi, Book of Hicks Lego. <laughs> Thank you for joining a second stream this week. Um, I will, I, as I said earlier, I don't normally uh, do more than one stream a week, but I wanted to finish it so much. So, um, so Rosie asks, what Harry Potter sets have you built so far? So this is actually the first one. So I've been really restrained, mostly because I was actually really poorly. So I came home from the Lego store 
on Tuesday and I um, I basically built, well, I had a nap first of all and then I built the um, Everyone's Awesome set which I really liked but that was kind of all I managed and then I basically spent most of my day in bed um, yesterday but, but I streamed um, the build of the um, Honey Jukes one, I think in the end, I think yesterday I was like, oh, maybe it's just hay fever, but I think it possibly was a cold as well. And I think my body was just like, oh, you've not been ill for like a year and a half? Here. I don't know how to deal with that anymore. Um, but don't worry if anybody worried, I did take a COVID test just in case, because I think everybody gets a bit paranoid these days when they're not feeling very well. So um, it's all good. I'm feeling much, much better today. So my voice is kind of still a bit odd, but that's all. And there we go. So yeah, I've, I've started Hogsmeade um, on stream, so I'll probably finish that, and I want to build some brickheads tomorrow, but I wanted to finish this today because I really want to make a little review of this to release later this week or maybe next week, because that was kind of my aim of being off this week, like just focus on building all the new sets, get some reviews and thoughts out, not that I'm really like a reviewing YouTuber, I tend to just, I feel like most things are said, I just like to share my thoughts and stuff, so um, just want to want to do that with this one especially, because you know, I love the Harry Potter set, so I'd like to share the love for it, so absolutely. Minister of Making says, love doing the three broomstick build last night. Hinge, um, hinge brick roof. Oh, sorry, it moved, so I have to catch up. I'll wait for your opinion. Patience is tested with the three broomsticks. Nearly went out the window. Oh, okay. Well, um, we'll find out what bit that is later, no doubt. Um, I need to probably put this down, because otherwise I'm going to break this build. I'm really good at, like, breaking builds whilst I'm building because I'm holding it rather than putting it on the table. Um, bad building habits. There we go. I love all these masonry. I think if I had to choose my absolute favourite Lego element, it probably would be the masonry brick. So, um, yes, absolutely. There we go. Um, hi, Nicoletta, how are you doing? Welcome, Lego Mama 92. Oh, thank you, adore your Lego collection goals. <laughs> Thank you. It's it's gone a little bit out of hand since uh, since I started collecting in August. I have to say I wasn't planning for this to like get this big this quickly, but I'm loving it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Rosie says only the first one. Yeah, I know. I've been really restrained. It, it, I mean, I would have built more if I'd been feeling better. To be fair, um, but also at the same time, I have this problem of I don't really have a Lego shame pile, so. When I went to the shop and bought all these sets, it was kind of exciting because it's like, oh, I have all these projects like in my like pile of to do, but it also kind of made me apprehensive of actually building them because I was like, I don't want the pile to disappear. I like to have like projects to look forward to, but um, yeah, no, no doubt that pile probably will be finished by the end of the weekend. I'm really, really excited for the Chamber of Secrets one, but I've not really watched a lot of reviews or like people's thoughts on them because I kind of want to like get it all, um, like get it all seen by myself first because you know I feel like there's no, no substitute for like building a set yourself. Um, Tilbrooks in Paradise, how you doing? Western Wolf, hiya, yeah, how you doing? Max K, hope you're well, thanks for joining again, really appreciate it. Grogu Studio as well, <laughs> I'm late because I was doing Spanish homework. Spanish, nice, I've never done Spanish at school but because I was pretty rubbish at every single other language I took I'm probably not that good at that either but you need to do your homework so good going. Um, Western Wolf, everyone loves the masonry bricks, like, <laughs> yeah, I think they're just, like, such a perfect little thing to, um, make, like, add detail with, so, yeah, I think they're a good, they're a good little brick. They're very popular when they're on, um, pick a bricks wall, pick a bricks walls in, um, Lego schools. Um, were you getting the fluffy set? So, I haven't purchased it yet, um, as you probably will know if you've watched my latest video. But, I, yeah, I mean, I will be getting it in, in, in the future at some point. The thing that put me off it is, I think it's the same with the, um, words, the Hungarian Horntail. It's quite an expensive set, but mostly because the animal in it. Um, and I'm not a massive fan of, like, the brick-built animals. Um, but I will get it. I, I kind of held off on that one and the Quidditch one, because they kind of both were, like, not my favourite builds didn't need them as much and also I felt like I could either wait for them to be discounted or they would be really good like birthday presents or like little sets that like if I ever was feeling down I just wanted a little pick-me-up like they would be kind of like the perfect thing to go and treat myself to so I didn't want to get everything straight away also really like I shouldn't because of budget but 
if you follow me long enough, you know that like breaking the budget is, is something that occasionally happens here. <laughs> um, says every single Lego YouTuber ever. Um, it's fine. I stuck to it this time, so that is fine. Um, so yes, I will be getting it basically, so um, no worries. Also, Western Wolf, he says I'm, I'm on my lunch break at work. No worries, like if you have to go back, absolutely no, no worries. Like, thanks for joining anyway. Um, Ministry of Making says I will never be able to have a shame pile. No, I feel like I wouldn't, it seems like odds to have a shame pile. I mean, I, c I get why it would happen, like if you're really busy and like lots of projects going on and you have the means to buy quite a lot of sets, then yeah, I can see why they would stack up, but I feel like to me, like having a Lego shame pile is like the dream. <laughs> but um, yeah, fair enough if you have one though. Um, Rossi says, I'm saving the Chamber of Secrets until last. I built the buildable figures today and I'm not a big fan of them. Oh, interesting actually. I didn't buy them because though they're actually kind of, I think they're kind of cute looking because they had them build in a shop. I was also kind of like, I literally have, I mean, you know that my room's pretty small, so having room to display them is pretty limited so I was like I, I don't think I have any room for them and they were like 120 pounds so I'm much more of like a building Lego fan rather than like build the you know all the like cool collectibles I'd much rather spend my money on other things but um yeah I've heard some mixed reviews on them but then you know that's fine there's lots of mixed reviews on things anyway so um it'll be for some people and not for others but um yeah I'd love to hear your thoughts on it Rosie actually um, Rig Dude says, what do you want the new Harry Potter advent calendar? Oh, do you want the new ha Harry Potter advent calendar? I talked about it a little bit yesterday, so bottom line is I'll be getting it because I really liked having a Lego Harry like advent calendar last year because it was like, I had a little Lego build every single day of December, like it was like having a little present every day. But, and I was already kind of just unsure I was going to love it when I heard the rumour, um, having seen the advent calendar, I'm a bit like, hmm, eh, it's not that great. Um, but then I was kind of not expecting it to be that great either. There are some really cool printed tiles in there, like the birthday cake seems to be fun, the like ticket, sorry, the ticket for the Hogwarts Express is really cute. Um, I like the, I'm assuming these are prints, by the way, I don't know, but I'm assuming these are prints. Um, but I like the platform nine and three quarter signs, but the builds are all a bit naff, and I'm just, I'm not highly excited about them, so. Yeah, I'm not like, um, like can't wait, but I'll, I'll get them for December. I'll use it as an actual calendar, um, like I did last year, because it's just really nice to have a little Lego build every day. But yeah, nothing that I'm like uber excited about, basically. Um, do you like the buildable figures in real life at the store? Oh, so I think I've already mostly answered this, but yeah, I saw them in real life and I actually thought they looked really nice. They were quite cute. Um, I know some people think they look creepy, but I didn't really have that vibe. I thought they were quite nice looking. Um, I like the concept of them more and more as like time goes on, because I was very, I mean, when the rumours came out, you you know what I thought. I was very sceptical. But actually, um, in reality, I don't think they're that bad, or at least they didn't look that bad. But I think they're like, they're like a Marmite set, a little bit like, like the forks and the buildable head wig and stuff. Like, they were a love it or hate it thing, because and, we'll, and Ben and I will discuss this more once um, once he's built his forks, but um, he's actually a really big fan of the uh, buildable Hedwig and he's bought forks for himself, but I think a lot of people also really dislike the Hedwig, so I think it's just one of those builds that like divides people a lot, but no doubt it will sell enough to have been worth it. Um, on a completely unrelated subject that I don't know very much about, I saw the Star Wars leaks today, and they actually looked really cool. Um, again, I've said this before, I don't know very much about Star Wars, I haven't seen all movies or anything, but um, for like what I've... I'm not that into spaceships or anything, but actually I really liked um, some of the things that came out and I like the... Fi I really like the Star Wars figures, but um, I'm not going into that. I'm not going to buy Star Wars sets, but I was very excited to see some really cool newish looking ones coming out. Um, <laughs> Raymond is like, budget? Was there? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, Grogu is like it said. I would like to make a mock series called "Building a Huge Lego Mountain for My City." Though I feel like that would be a waste. Um, I've seen what's he called? Brookie Bricks? Somebody? Bro Bookie Brew? Or so, I don't know. I'm probably completely butchering his name. But he's done a really cool um, uh, mountain for a city, which looks kind of cool. 
if you have like a purpose for it or you think it would really add to the city like I would go for it but yeah it's very part intensive um Oh my god, Brick of Pigs Lego says, I have a ridiculous shame, huge shame pile, it's crazy, lol. So how does it build up? Like, how can you... Is it just because you don't have the time to build them, or is it because, like, you prioritise doing mocks and projects to do your existing sets over building new ones? Like, how does a, how does a shame pile build up? Let me know. Inside of these. Rosy says, I'm posting a review on the buildable figs tomorrow. Go follow him if you want to know about the buildable figures. Um, Western Wolf, I slap... Um, I slept on the excuse for my shame file that it's keeping them in mint condition. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> it's fair enough. Um, yes, they, they're hugely valuable. I think the problem sometimes is because I saw a lot of people that have a shame file, like had, um, what's that set called that was really valuable from a lot of, um, a lot of drawings? Star Wars, like the best bin duel. Like, a lot of people from the US got them, and then they were in a shame pile, but then because they were rare, the value of them shot up, and then people started being worried about, like, opening them, because it would degrade them in value so much. Um, which is fair enough, but yes, sealed sets are worth a decent amount. There we go. <laughs> um, the Star Wars advent calendar this year looks great. Oh, yeah, I've, I've seen it's, um, relative. It all seems to be very Mandalorian themed, doesn't it? Which is kind of surprising. Um, but really cool. I've heard some varying opinions on the, um, on the advent calendars. I think, I mean, to be fair, they always kind of divide people because because of the essence of them being 24 little builds, you're always going to have like a few naff, like, meh, why is this even in here builds? But um, I like the figures in them, to be fair. Absolutely. Um... Grogu Studio says, there is this guy in Italy who's famous for building big figs, the ones you see at Legoland, the ones like two meters tall, he makes kids play with his Lego to get inspired. That's so cool! Oh my gosh. Yeah, I really would, um, I've been watching some like behind the scenes of like Lego companies that build like these big statues and like sculptures for parks and exhibitions and stuff and it's like insane. It's such a cool project as well because I remember like a, f this must, oh shit, this is like a few years ago but in London Covent Garden they had like a little Lego exhibition with like Lego statues some time ago and I remember like watching like a video about how they were made and I was like oh my god that's amazing but that was obviously before I was into Lego so I feel like I didn't know very much about it then either so right this is already very cute but it is quite small basically today when I was working on this um I wasn't working on this but when I was thinking about this I've decided that I'm going to get, def like definitely will get another Hogsmeade because I just want to make these ones bigger and also, um, is it Mick Mac Padawak, but it's not the whole thing, like something like that on Instagram has done some really fantastic um, mods of these, um, mods? Yeah, like some mods of these buildings to kind of give them different chimneys and give them some more lattice work and stuff. So I think I was looking at his stuff and I was like quite inspired by the things he changed. So I feel like I'm going to adopt some of his strategies to um, to do that myself. Also, here's some foamy butterbeer. Cheers. Um, speaking of the Hogwarts Express, recently thought about pick up uh, to pick up a coffee to add to my Hogwarts display. What's your opinion on this set? Um, I mean, it's a train. <laughs> I personally like it, so I've only ever owned the um, Prisoner of Azkaban set, which comes with the Hogsmeade platform, I think. I mean, it's a really, it's really sparse, the platform, but it's mostly just a train and a Dementor and Lupin, I think. So I like that set a lot. So when I got, the, I haven't got any more, as you all know, I sold all my Lego from when I was younger, but then I got this for my birthday and I actually really like that it comes with like a proper platform build. So if you want to have a, um, if you want to have a train in your in your Harry Potter display, like definitely, it's I really like it. I think the golden detail is nice, the printed pieces are nice. I wish it was like a tiny bit bigger, so like it was minifigure scale, but because it has to fit with like the system, I wasn't expecting it to, to be honest. There's some fantastic mocks on it though. Um, Tommy C. Bricks has done the fantastic mocks of the um, of the Hogwarts Express in like um, I think dark red instead of bright red, but um, unless you're a millionaire, that's going to be a bit pricey to build. <laughs> Um, oh, good luck with work, Western Wolf. See you later. Um, Brickabix Lego said, I have no idea. I go through phases of not building, but I don't go through phases of not buying. Okay, yeah, that's fair. 
I have a monthly budget. I also get sets from family for Christmas when I'm <laughs> when I'm crazy busy. Yeah, okay, that's fair. I, I always kind of probably thought it was like a um a lack of time to kind of build them to be fair. So that makes sense. Um because for like when I got into Lego in August, my like my birthday is September the 8th, so I had quite a few really lovely friends and family give me Lego sets. So for a while I had a shame pile of sets I could build, which was amazing, especially because I had just started off the Lego hobby. So I went from like three sets to like 10 quite quickly because I was just given so much, which was a really good way to get very addicted to Lego. <laughs> but um, I did have a shame pile then, I guess, so. Hi Jessica, how you doing? Welcome. Um, there we go. Grovy says, um, NASA paid that guy to build a massive shuttle to put in their museum. They um, gave him one year time and you can imagine how massive it will be. Oh my gosh, like have they recently done that? Because that's very exciting. He must be really good. I mean, obviously if he does this for a living, he has to be, but yeah. Stephen Brick Ethel, how you doing? Welcome, said. It's only been a week or so since I've discovered your channel. I've been binge watching it ever since. Greetings from Belgium. Hello. Um, I don't know if you're from like the Flemish or the um, or the uh, French speaking part, but otherwise I'd go and <laughs> greet you in Dutch. But welcome to the channel. Nice to have you here. Um, Rosie said, if you want the Hogwarts Express, get it now as it's about to try, which is a very good point. Yes, there is some good sets that are about to retire. So if you're if you're ready for some sets and you want them now, go grab them before it's too late because we all know what happens when things retire, they become double as expensive. I mean, these are Harry Potter sets, they probably won't get that expensive, but it never helps when the prices go up. Right, it is time ladies and gentlemen, I have to apply a sticker. I know, I know, it's a time we all fear. I feel that went well. Oh, for anybody that was here yesterday and that was worried about my uh, the sticker that I applied to the upstairs window of Honeydukes and I completely fudged up, um, I contacted Lego today and I was like, I was building this set and I ruined it. Is there any way I can buy another sticker sheet from you? And they were like, don't worry, we'll send you a new one. And I was like, thank you. So I'm going to get a new sticker sheet so I can do a better job basically of that sticker. Because it kind of, it, it got really ruined. So that's very exciting. Talking about really ruined, I also did that to this one. Go on. Back off, please. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to concentrate for two seconds just on the sticker. Right, I find these harder because I like to line them up exactly with the bottom rather than be in the middle of the piece because it has like the panelling but um, I think I did a better job the second time than I did the first time. I get so nervous to applying stickers like in general always takes a good amount of concentration but like doing them on, str on stream is like um, a whole other kettle of fish. So. Oh, I, I've also noticed I've put them on, on the wrong way around. Ah, oh, well, it's fine. I'll just customise my Hogsmeade. Um, Michael, hello, Michael. He said, it's my wife's birthday today. Wow, that's amazing. Congratulations. Sorry, I'm just going to be quickly scrolling back because I missed some stuff. Is that my sig, sig fig I can see in a park says Ministry of Making? Yes! So I've got, um, I don't know if you can see him, but he's just here. So I've got myself, um, Ben, and Hannah from Hannah Beverly Bricks, who's at the little picnic table next to the coffee shop um, in my park, having coffee and cake. So yeah, I hope you can see that. See? He's not in storage. Don't give me grief for that. <laughs> Jessica said I'm from the Netherlands. Awesome! Yeah, I kind of could tell by your surname. Um, welcome. Uh, welcome you here to Heather. Um, Ministry of Making says Hogwarts Express was my first set that George bought for me at Christmas 2018 and that was the start <laughs> and that's what started me off so it will always be super special to me. How funny, um, the Hogwarts Express is actually the gift that Ben gave me when I first started collecting um, for my birthday as well so we both got that from our partners. <laughs> 
Can you show us honey dupes? I will. Um, yes, it's currently in the place I'm going to put it, but I'll grab it in a minute. Um, I'm just going to have to finish this off. Max said the old ones are ridiculously priced. I'm browsing on eBay right now, haha. <laughs> May have to get the new one. Um, yes, I mean, eBay is never the great, the best place to find um, retired Lego anyway, because you do get some ridiculous prices sometimes. Like, more inflated than they already are. But, um, to be honest, like, they're all very similar, like, feeling, and the new one is not that different to the old ones. Controversial opinion, but in essence it's the same build, so I think getting a new one is definitely just more sensible. Also you'll have some more bricks and more of a um, more of a platform, which is quite nice. Um, Grovey said I ruined my Millennium Falcon by adding those nasty stickers. Oh no! Yeah, adding stickers can be a bit of a pain to be fair. Um, when, when Ben builds a set, which I know is quite rare, he does ask me to do it. I'm generally quite good at it, but obviously on stream it's a bit, it's a bit different. Not as good because I'm not concentrating as hard. Lego Mama nice user stickers have to be straight. I have major OCD with Lego stickers. Yeah, um, I've gotten more relaxed recently, but yeah, I have. They have to be straight, but sometimes I decide to have them maybe not centered in the piece, but like at the bottom aligned or something, depending on what kind of sticker it is. Stickers. <laughs> I'm, I don't mind them too much. I think the Harry Potter ones need them because they do really give it that detail that it needs. But yeah, they can be an absolute pain. Um, but I've calmed myself down a little bit on like how precise I need to be because um, I think it's also because I, I buy, if I want like a second one of a particular set, I often try and find it second hand instead. And for example, I have a second Quidditch set and that was obviously owned by a child so some of the stickers are just appalling and I just have to live with that because I bought it for like a tenner. So yeah, sometimes, sometimes you just kind of have to pick your, pick and choose your battles. Um, hi Snow Alex. Hello, how is it going? It's going well, thank you very much. Um, doing much better than yesterday. Um, so far I've not run out of room to blow my nose, which kept happening yesterday during the stream because I was not feeling well. Um, which made for an entertaining, entertaining time. Ooh. Okay. Can you show us honey jukes? Uh, yeah, yeah, I will do um, Brick Dude Lego. I, I saw your comment earlier. I will, um, I will grab it in a minute. I'm just, um, I'm just doing the building now. Um, you can see my... One minute, I'll go grab it. It's behind me. Oh. Here it is. All builds. I don't know if you can see on stream, but this this is the window where we're in a bit. It's it's wonky, and because I had to take it off and back on again, like it's not clear anymore. But as I said, um, Lego is very kindly sending me a new sticker, which is very great. I'm very grateful for that. And then here is the inside. Oh, I mean that was going to happen by holding it up. Um, I actually really really love this building. I think it's really cute. I like the chimneys. I've seen some mocks where people made it like a central chimney, but I actually quite like the two separate ones. I think the size works really well for where I want to put it. What I did say, I think on stream yesterday, I was saying that um, I was gonna, um, what did I say? I was gonna have it in that kind of unit. I wanted to have the Shrieking Shack, a mock of Zonkos, which I wanted to design, and then both this three, three bro broomsticks, which I'm likely to extend, as well as Honeydukes, which I'm likely to extend. And I put this into the Calyx unit and I was like, there's no room for four buildings. Like, no way is there room for that. So I'm gonna have to just kind of really properly design that area because otherwise I'm, I'm trying to put too much there, basically, is, um, is what I'm saying. Right, I might put that out of the way. There we go. Um... Let's go back up a tiny bit. <laughs> Lego Mama 92 says, Total silence for sticker placement is essential. Yeah, it, it's... Doing a stream in stickers is not a, not ideal. Um, Amiga Man says, Lego stickers' sole, uh, stickers sole purpose is to test our patience. Exactly, and our... Um, and many other skills as well. What's your favourite summer 2021 figure from the Harry Potter sets? Ooh, figure. I mean, obviously I haven't unboxed all of them yet. So I haven't seen all of them in the flesh yet because there's quite some really nice ones. I love the golden 
golden trio from the chest set. Like, I think that printing is really nice. I really like their design. So I feel like they're possibly up there. Um, I like the McGonagall that comes with this set. I'm really excited actually to see her in real life. I really love that she has a different dress. So that makes me really excited. Um, I like the new Dumbledore. I like the new Gilderoy. I really love the new Tom Riddle. I feel like I can't answer that question properly until I've seen them in the flesh because I feel like that's such a... Like, that really makes or breaks the figure, so... I will, I will withhold that question for now and answer it at a later date. Oh, hi, Brickstery! Hiya! How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Sorry, I was still on a really long-winded question that I made a really long answer to. Is there any whispers of a new Harry Potter CMS? I really, really want a new one. I have not heard any whispers. Also, I feel like because the, the first CMF came out in 2018, and the second CMF came out in 2020, I feel like it, if it comes, which absolutely zero rumours exist right now, apart from people wanting it, I don't think it would come before 2022. So I think we have to be a bit patient. I really hope so, because there's so many figures I'd love, either in a different version or more of, so. Like pink haired tongs. Um, big dude Lego ice, I gave you, I showed Honey Dukes. Um, Oh, Harry Potter mad. Hi, yeah. How you doing? Welcome to the stream. Purple Shroom. Hey. Hope I haven't missed anything. No, no, no. I'm just. I've just started building. Um. No. Well, it's going quite quickly actually. I feel like at some point during the stream, I'm probably going to realise there's something wrong. But um, so far so good. So far so good. Um. So far also not run out of blow my nose yet. So I'm doing better. <laughs> doing better than last time. Um. It's really pretty. Actually, what I am planning on doing to this set is um, when we get to the upstairs, I think we're going to get to some of the, um, what's it called? We're going to get to some of the windows, like the smaller square windows that won't have the golden detail. They'll just have like a um, tinted glass um, and you can buy the golden um, lattice to go in there. And I'm going to buy some, some golden lattice from Bricklink so I can add that in instead because I feel like that's just a detail that I would really like to add, and that's going to really change the, the look of the set. Um, awesome. Grogu said, how on earth did you message Lego? I need to have a good word for them, just a word. Why do you retire beautiful modulars like the Brick Bank? Why? Oh, I know, I want the Brick Bank so much. Um, I want the Brick Bank so much, but not for retired prices. Um, you, if you go to the Lego website, there is like email and phone and chat services to use to use um, if you have like any issues or something. So I just went to the, what's was it, an email? No, I called actually just to ask because I, I was, I was very willing to pay for like a new sticker sheet because it was obviously me that ruined the sticker, but they very kindly sent it for free, which Lego customer service. Awesome. Thank you. Um... Rosie said, I think Lockhart from this um, Chamber of Secrets is probably my favourite. Yeah, it's, I mean, he looks awesome. I really like the Lockhart that came with, um, with the Diagon Alley, who is right here, holding his own book, as you'd expect. Um, but I haven't, I like the colour that he comes with in the, in the Chamber of Secrets, so I'm really excited to see him. But I can't make up my mind until I've seen him in real life, right? Colours may be really different. Poopal Shroom said, wait, you have different hair. Yes, yes, I got it cut, thank you, this morning. Um, because I hadn't actually cut it since January 2020. <laughs> um, because, like, basically, like, lockdowns happened. And then, like, when, like, n there was no lockdown and I could get it cut, I was kind of happy with the length of it. Because I've got curly hair, like, it kind of hides any imperfections. And then by the time I was like, I need a haircut, it was lockdown again, so I couldn't get it cut. So basically, I was just in this, uh, in this dude. Oh, Big Dude says, um, I'm just going to go to bed. Good night. Thank you for joining. No worries. Um, Patrick says, hey, you're back. Do live streams in one week. I know, I know. Blowing all of our minds. But I had to finish the set. Obviously, I wasn't well enough to do it yesterday. So I was like, I'm going to jump on really quickly today just to finish the set because it's too beautiful. And I just, just had to share, you know, just had to do it. So, um, and I was like, I started this as a, as a live stream. I'm going to have to, I'm going to finish this as a live stream. Also, <laughs> hi Daniel, hello from Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, cool, good to have you. Awesome, Lego Danny Bob. 
Awesome. Thank you for joining. Also, ooh, 35 watching, but only 21 likes. Good for pointing that out. Go like the stream. I feel like that's probably the first time I've said that. Like the stream, people. It helps. Um, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> um, Patrick said, are you feeling better from yesterday? Yeah, I'm definitely feeling much better. Thank you. You can probably tell in my voice as well. It's still a bit crooked, but I am feeling so much better. So I had a, I still had a really big nap this afternoon because I didn't need it, but I've basically just been building Lego and watching friends all day. So hopefully by tomorrow I'll fill up to actually leave the house because we have no food in the house and I was meant to do groceries, but because I was feeling really rubbish, I haven't been out. So we've just been eating soup, <laughs> soup and bread for three days. <laughs> Poor Ben, but he's been working, so he didn't have time either. <laughs> Essential details from Johanna's life. <laughs> um. I'm so excited to open my pink Dumbledore's as James. Yes, yes, I really need to see him. He's gonna be awesome, I think. I, to be honest, um, I don't know if you can hear my computer, but it literally sounds like it's gonna take off. Um, but to be honest, I think the figures in this wave has been, have been really great. That Yeah, there is some things we could have changed, but, um, you know, it wasn't, it's not been too bad, and there was lots of new recolors that we wanted. So that's really cool. Also, um, I don't know if anybody saw seen my latest like um, city update video from like a f week or so ago, but um, all the f all the flesh coloured faces from the kits and Stranger Things are available are available to buy on um, bricks and pieces. So I ordered quite a few of those faces because I thought because we have some duplicates of the same children's face in a Hogwarts set, I thought I can just replace them with one of those. Um, also, having more flesh um, coloured faces is really helpful for like adding more minifigures to Diagon Alley and stuff. So um, that was a really big order. <laughs> but they're not too expensive from Lego directly. I think they were either like 25 or 50 per head. So not too bad at all. Would recommend. So that's from the Stranger Things house. Because it's very unusual to get, like to be able to order the faces from minifigures separately. Because actually, if you don't own the Stranger Things set, but you want to own the 11 minifigure, you can actually buy every single part of her minifigure on um, Tricks and Pieces, which is interesting, I have to say. Very unusual. Um, oh, oh, I'm not, I'm not on, up to date. Oh my gosh. Um, Gross, I just realised how tall that ramen shop is. Tile in the bookshop, impressive. Yeah, it's, it is really tall to be fair. Um, I, it was my impression, like, I wanted it to be a similar size to the modulars because it was going to sit next to them. So I had to have them all, you know, aligned. It had to feel like it came from the same series. So I, I made the height quite significantly bigger. <laughs> Um, Purple Shroom says, if you could have any of the retired Harry Potter sets, what do you want the most? Hmm. So I'm gonna, I feel like I've mentioned this set so much, but um, I've had, I bought a really big bulk buy of retired Lego in August last year, but I, I bought it in the Netherlands, so my parents went to pick it up, and because of lockdowns and quarantines and stuff, I've not actually seen them since then, so I still haven't got them. So actually I own quite a few, so allegedly, spoilers, there should be a Darmstrang ship, there should be the Mer people, there should be like the Goblet of Fire graveyard, there should be the Shrieking Shack, there is the old like Chamber of Secrets Dumbledore Tower from like 2001, 2002, there is like this is all off the top of my head. I don't know if any of these are going to be complete exactly because it's like somebody's child's collection so I don't know how much of this is going to be complete but it looks pretty good um so I own quite a lot of Harry Potter like vintage Harry Potter sets I just haven't got them here nor have I been able to build them or find out like how much or how complete they are which is really frustrating um so hopefully <laughs> hopefully sometime this year I will be able to get it maybe before the one year anniversary of um of me buying them I'll actually be able to have them but um, for a, for a long time, I really well, I really wanted the um, two thousand and four Hogwarts castle, which I now own because that's a really nostalgic set, as well as the same year's Hagrid's hut. So the Prison of Azkaban wave is the most um, nostalgic to me. I think now, from the ones I don't own, I really really want you know those like two thousand and one like girls vintage sets. You know the one with like the common room with Ron and Diagon Alley with Hermione. And then like the Mirror of Error set with Harry. Those three I really want, including backdrops. Because I had one of them, I had the Ron one. 
and I I think they're just so funky like I love the colors in them and they're just so unlike any other Harry Potter Lego and so unlike any Lego or color scheme like um, Lego would choose for that theme now so I just think they're really fun and funky plus I quite like the background so yes if I could have any I think I would get those at the moment that's kind of off the top of my head what I would get basically also oh my god I need to not give such long-winded answers because I lose I lose track of the chat um well hello to minifig who hi thank you for joining the stream it's so awesome to have you here Oh, thank you. Yes, I am feeling better. <laughs> did you find a hairdresser that wanted to talk about Lego? Okay, so funnily enough, we did talk about Lego because I don't know how it came up. We were just talking about like what what lockdowns do to you and like how it's um, how it affected them and stuff. And I just ended up bringing up the fact that I started a whole Lego YouTube thing and like that I got massively into Lego. And he and he was like, oh yes, my son bought like these three Game of Thrones dragons that like are massive that you had to build himself and he really loved it and we we're just talking about how a lot of people seem to have gotten into hobbies that put them in control because I really feel like I got into Lego because Lego allows you to be in control of the build and in control of what you're building and it's really great in a time where like you have no control over your life so that's a really deep answer but that's basically what we ended up talking about so yes the head it was the first time I went to the salon and the hairdresser was lovely, he was called Jamie, and I'm 100% going back because it's the first time I have a hairdresser that I was like, I like talking to you, because I really don't like going to the hairdresser, which is why I've postponed it for so long. <laughs> um, for once you are building Lego quickly on stream, what, an, what a miracle. You say that now, Gregory Studios, but I keep getting distracted by interesting questions. Um, Maybe, maybe it's just like, it's like a talent, isn't it? Like the more you do it, the more like practiced you, you are, I suppose. Um, <laughs> there we go. Uh, will you be modifying and adding the three broomsticks? I think so. Um, I was saying, uh, sorry. Um, I basically was saying earlier that a uh, Micmac Padawak or whatever he's called, I keep a loose track of what people are called on Instagram, but he's done some really fun um, mods to this, these sets which are really easy to do and quite cheap. So there's some lattice when there I'll be replacing. And yes, I think the three broomsticks should be added as like actual brooms. It's not even that hard to do. I've seen some excellent mods of that. So yes, I'm pretty sure I will. Um, <laughs> will you get the, <laughs> the friend set next? Uh, I may, I mean, it's on my list, but because it's just come out, it's like not that urgent to me because I feel like it's gonna probably stick around for a while. Plus, I think I was saying this last stream. Oh, I've done something wrong, I think. One minute. Hold up. I know what I've done. Um, I was saying this last stream, but it's it's a very sh like low, wide set. So like displaying it is really tricky. Because basically it requires a lot of like real estate to be displayed properly. So I feel like I will be getting the Lego set eventually. Uh, the Lego friend set, like the apartments, but I need to know where to display it first because at the minute I haven't got room, which is just because everything in my city needs to go up in order for me to have more room rather than wide, which is a long winded answer. But yes, I will be getting it eventually. Ministry of Makers said, I don't feel like you're going to get the friend set for a while. I adore it, but I still have nowhere to put it. Here we go. That's exactly what I just said. Yes, James, that's pretty much what I meant. Um, Done sign ship for me, says Carrie from Brickface Lego. Yes, I really want that set, but because I think it's in the bulk Lego that I bought literally nearly a year ago, I don't want to list that because I feel like I own it, but I'm not sure yet. Um, Grogu Studios, oh, hi, Emma Soros. Welcome, Emily. I, I was saying the other day that I kept calling you Emma because it's Emma Soros, but I have learned better now. I'm so sorry for that stupid mistake. Welcome to the stream. Grogu said, um, when I was small, I would look at catalogues and say, I need that for my city and that. And then I came to Harry Potter and said, that church would look very cool. Yes, 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 yes. There's a lot of really cool sets. Um, I've seen a mock, mock, I mean, it's kind of in between where they took the great hall set and a clock tower set and they added it together and made like a cathedral for a, for a modular city, but obviously using Harry Potter sets, which is super cool. Hi Daniel, welcome to the stream, nice to see you. You said follow it on Instagram, thank you for live streaming. This channel is encouragement to what we are trying to do with our own channel. Oh, awesome, oh, thank you so much, that's so nice. Um, 
Yep, you've convinced me to buy the build the buildable figures, Emmasaurus. Yes, yeah, it was an excellent video, Emma, of Emily. Here we, here we go, I do it again. Um, great video. I l they were really cute in the shop as well, they tempted me, but the price put me off. One day, maybe, if I have more room to display them. Patrick says you can display them in the living room. Yes. So who's going to talk to Ben to say that we're now also taking over the Lego, the, the living room with Lego set display? To be fair, the, the everyone's awesome sets in the, in the living room. Oh, I've said, make yourself a custom clear plastic glass topped coffee table for the friend set. Oh, yes. Yeah, I know what you mean. I've seen a lot of people um, buy like one of those um, glass topped coffee tables to use um, to display the US UCS Millennium Falcon in that looks so cool. Also, like having friends over and just going like, oh yeah, here's my Millennium Falcon just casually parked. Like, love that. But yeah, maybe, maybe I should do that. Or maybe I should like build, this is probably not gonna happen, but this is just my mind racing. But like, if I got like one of those coffee tables, you could build like the Hogwarts grounds in it and then you could have like all these scenes happening. Like, if it's like deep enough, that'd be really cool. Now I need to do that. When am I winning the lottery to realise all these projects? <laughs> um, on a scale to, from 1 to 10, how great is Hogsmeade? I really want it. Ooh, I mean I've not finished it yet and I've ruined one sticker on, um, on here, which Lego is very kindly replacing by sending me a new one. But so far, I'm absolutely loving it. It's really cute. The details are great. I would say nine <laughs> so quite high up there we, we can't give them a 10 because there's always room for improvement right so that just does that reveal something about my personality but yes i think it's really good and also if you like winter village sets it would really fit in with winter village sets if you have a little modular city like i know you do then i think you could mod them like if you bought two you could make them like more modular and like add them to maybe your theme park somewhere <laughs> so plenty of options Actually, that reminds me, I don't know if any of you have ever been to Versailles in um, in Paris, but if you go into the grounds of Versailles, there is um, Marie Antoinette's village, because when she was queen, like, I, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about, but she was really obsessed with, like, peasants' lives and, like, how they lived and sort of really idolised, like, their simple lives. So she had, like, a um, peasant village build in the grounds of Versailles, which is basically a bit like a theme park. Um, so if you go now, it's like, it's like the idolised version of what, like, something is like. But they have all these little cute villages, like, little cute buildings. So I feel like this, these buildings would have the same vibe, so it would be perfect for, um, it'd be perfect for having that in the, in the, in the theme park area, um, Emily. Broker Pig said, get Beef out <laughs> to talk to him. They seem to be a lovely bromance going. <laughs> Oh yeah, I can get just I can get Bfab to convince Ben to allow me to have these things. Excellent idea. Oh, don't encourage them, please. <laughs> um, Harry Potter man said it's my favourite from this wave. Yeah, I mean it's the one I'm most most excited about. So I feel I'm, I'm prejudiced for this one, but I absolutely love it. No worries. <laughs> I chose a confusing YouTube name, Emma Emily. It all works. Oh Bessie, I'm trying. I'm so sorry, but for some it just keeps happening. Anyway. I know your actual name, I just may say it wrong. Apologies. Um, <laughs> Patrick says, would you ever buy the UCS Millennium Falcon? I think it's way too expensive. So, I'm obviously not um, a Star Wars fan. Like, I haven't got a connection to that franchise as I do with Harry Potter. But, like, it's so cool. Like, it's massive. It's so cool. Ben, actually, actually, I was talking to Ben about what his dream Lego set would be because, you know, I'm gonna, I've got to have to, like, get him into this Lego hobby at some point. And he said if he ever had the money, he would buy that set. And I was like, yes, please. So, um, if we ever win the lottery, <laughs> Ben is going to buy the Millennium Falcon, apparently. Which, um, is definitely something I'll hold him to. But it is a lot of money, to be fair, Patrick. Like, absolutely. It's, it's insane. But it's also huge, like, if you see that thing in real life, like, oh my gosh, so much Lego. Br Brickstory says, have you put, uh, thought of not putting the snow on the roofs? Um, I've seen some mocks of it. I don't, I mean, I will add it because I've bought white base plates for this area because I really like when, um, 
I really like it with, with the snow on the roots. But yeah, I guess you could do if if you wanted to fit it in somewhere where you don't have snow, then you could totally go for like the no snow roof thing. A little bit similar to um let me grab this. So Scarlet Patronus, oh it's a bit oh no, it's really dusty. So Scarlet Patronus did this really lovely like butterbeer stand mock. And they did free instructions for them. They're on their Instagram. Um and I but it was with a white roof and with snow. So I basically just modded it so it doesn't have the snow, so it can be in my diagon alley, but it's really cute. So you could do that with them, um, with the Hogsmeade buildings, for sure. Um, I feel like this should be somewhere. I've missed this thing off at some point in the book. I'll go back later. There's a few bits that I seem to be missing. This is just what happens on the stream. Too busy talking, guys. I mean, you're keeping me very busy. Some excellent questions, to be fair. Um, I want the daily. Oh, this moved. I want the daily bugle, and if everything goes correctly, I'll get it. But there's a problem. My shelves aren't tall enough. Oh yes, I mean it's huge. To be fair, like it's really tall. Um, but maybe you just get like a custom little shelf next to it, or like get a little um like plan stand because they're quite high. And you could just put it on there. But I don't know what your room looks like, so that may not work for you. Also, I'm glad to hear it's the number one set that I won from the wave but was waiting till winter to buy it for a winter village. You've convinced me to get it before then. Yeah, oh my gosh, Emily, like definitely get it. It's such a fun build as well. It's really cute. Like there's so many lovely details. There is quite a few stickers though, so you need to prepare for that at least. Ooh, there's another, there's another chocolate frog card in here. Let's see what, what will happen. Also, Morgana, oh my gosh! Oh my god, I've just seen the back of McGonagall's robes. Oh my god, it's beautiful. Oh, it's better than I thought it was. Sorry, that was a really strong reaction, but I was really surprised. Because basically, the back of her robe has a really big thistle on. So for you, for you, those that aren't from the UK, so every country in the UK have their own um, signature... Um, like flower, like the English rose, but in Scotland it's the thistle, so because obviously McGonagall is very Scottish, as you can see in the movie she wears a lot of tartan, but actually she has like thistles as well, like in the book I think she has a thistle in her hat, but um, yes, so that's really cool that they put like a really beautiful print of like a thistle on the back. That's a really nice detail that I'm very excited about. So, my third Chocolate Fog card, it's a double. Um, I still don't know what this chap's called, but it's the same one that I had in the previous bag, so. But I'm sure I'll find people to, uh, to trade with, so it's not a problem. They are really cute, but I'm not a massive fan of random distribution. <laughs> it's fine, I still have like two unique ones, so it's okay. So here's McGonagall. She has just become my favorite minifigure in this, in this set. She is beautiful, that's so cool. Um, let me just take a drink, because my throat's getting very dry. The minifig who's I'd love to go to Versailles. I went with school, so when I was 17, so in like the second to last year of school, we went to Paris for the weekend, which was like crazy busy, but like a really cool experience. Because I'm from the Netherlands, it was only like a six hour drive, so it was actually really nearby. So we went there with school. Nearby is relative, by the way, if you're from a country that literally takes two hours to cross. Like, to us that was like a crazy distance, but in the grand scheme of things, six hours is definitely not a very bad drive. Um... <laughs> Emily is saying that she's going down the rabbit hole, she wants more Harry Potter sets. Yes! <laughs> we will convince you. <laughs> um, Max says, I'm probably the only one who never watched a single Star Wars movie. Uh, you're probably not the only one to be fair. I've watched the... So not the original trilogy, but like the prequels. So I watched the first one or two of that. I know about Jabba, I think. Not Jabba, what's this? Jaja. Char Jar Binks. Who was very annoying. But I really liked Padme. So maybe I've even seen all three, but that's where it ended. Because basically Ben was like, oh, I'll make you watch Star Wars and it'll be really fun. And then, um... And then for some reason we just never got further and I don't know why. So I've never really watched them. Not that I didn't want to, it just never really happened. Um, it's Laura from Scarlet Patronus's birthday today. Oh my gosh, I didn't know. 
go oh go check out Scarlet Patronus's Instagram page if you guys have time. They do awesome, awesome mocks, um, especially of Diagon Alley buildings, and they are super lovely. So if you have some time, give her some attention. Sorry, I'm, I realise I'm really behind on chat again. This is just excellent. Um. <laughs> I love Star Wars, but um, I love Star Wars too. But you can create stories with the Harry Potter sets, whereas Star Wars is kind of standalone. I feel like Star Wars sets would look really cool if you could like hang the ships up from the ceiling, like in a like so, you know in like uh, museums when you go to like the space like exhibitions, they have like planets hanging around the room and stuff. Like if you could do that with like ships, that would look so cool. Like you could walk among space, like. My brain is going crazy again, but that would be cool. Um, again, dedicate a room to a Star Wars galaxy in which you hang your Lego sets off the ceiling. Nothing can go wrong. The, cho the chocolate frog guards are messed up. Why do you get doubles? Um, I mean, I knew they're a random distribution, so you don't know what you're going to get ever. I was talking to James though, and he was saying that he actually only... I don't know if he had any doubles, actually. I think you all got unique ones, so... You can be really lucky, but it's alright. Um, welcome to Dark Side. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Tina's here, my sister. How are you doing? <laughs> so sad we didn't get go to Paris and Rome. I know, so sad. Stupid Covid, cancelling all those trips. Max said, there should be a warning sign on every Harry Potter set saying, can cause serious addiction. <laughs> it's a real issue. I think every, every Lego store should have this warning. So actually, um, on there's like um, some gambling shops in the UK for like, um, like sport gambling, for like matches outcomes and stuff. And every time you like, there is like an advert or something for that, it says, when the fun stops, stop, you know, because it talks about addiction. I feel like Lego should have like one of those, <laughs> those disclaimers. <laughs> um, just kidding, of course. Um, Blocksmith says, I can drive six hours and still be in my own state in Wisconsin, USA. Yeah, this is why I think distance is really relative to where you're from. Like because the United States is such a huge space or like um, landmass, like I can understand that you don't really you have a really different idea of what, what far is, but coming from a country that's literally so tiny, like smaller than lots of countries, um, that you can cross by train in like an hour, depending on where you go, like it's less than an hour, um, an hour and a half, but you know, like <laughs> that doesn't really, that doesn't really give you a good sense of things. So I've been, obviously I was in mainland Europe, so I could have gone anywhere, but to me driving two hours was really far, and then I moved to the UK and I slowly started to learn that, you know, distances can be, you know, two hour drive is actually not that bad, like that's super easy. But then like, if you compare that to America, like, it's just so much bigger, like people do crazy road trips in my opinion there and it's like, oh yeah, it's, it is what it is, just like a bit far. So yeah, like distance is such fun, it's so funny depending on where you're from. Very different experiences. Long tangent again. Do you plan on doing any other modular mocks like the ramen shop? I mean, the thing is, I plan so many things and then I check my budget and then they're like, ha ha ha, you're ambitious. So for the time being, I think I'm going to have to be focusing on, um, oh, did I do this wrong? Right? Yeah. So for the time being, I'm going to be focusing on making my Hogsmeade area and like doing some mocks and stuff for that. But, um, Yes, I would love to do more modular mocks. Obviously, I'm currently working on the alt build for Assembly Square, so that's obviously taking up some time, but that's obviously not my own mock. I'm just, like, using instructions for that. But many... There is just so many plans and just not enough Lego budget. Um, anybody else here that feels that? <laughs> um, it's a common project, a problem, I think. Um, have you been to the Harry Potter world um, from Universal? So I've been to the Harry Potter studio tour in London, I've never been to the US, so I've not been to like the theme park and I really, really want to go. I mean, I just want to visit the US at some point anyway, because I feel like it just, yeah, I don't know. I see so much about it online and stuff. Like I just would like to have gone there because there's nothing like going to the country and experiencing it. So you could get like, you get people's mindset more and you understand things better. So yeah, 
one day I hope to go to on all these trips but you know at the minute evidently Lego budget is being prioritized and traveling is not allowed so you know look it's good it's good to have plans for the future right <laughs> I have plenty but yeah I really want to go to Disney World as well because I love Disney um, just I've seen I've had some lovely friends from here that I've been to Disney World twice and I've seen their photos and I'm like oh, I need to go so during like lockdowns I've been watching like online videos from like people visiting the parks and you know like vlogs from years ago just to kind of get me through <laughs> um Ministry of Making says six out of six unique ones so far hope the Chamber of Secrets will be the same um I'd be really surprised if the Chamber of Secrets all have have unique ones um James but here's to hoping right <laughs> Um, <laughs> how's your day so far? For me, I'm at my job at the grocery store. I'm on a break. Oh, okay, cool. Hope your day's not too bad. Well done. Um, thank you for joining on your break. That's really cool. Sorry, I'm just, I feel like I'm missing a chat a bit. It's like moving quite quickly. Um, hey, hey, BFAP, how are you doing? <laughs> I think Ben's missing. Can you find him? I just, can you, I just picture you, BFAP, like opening my stream going like, Where's Ben? What's this rubbish? <laughs> um, he said he'll be back. I asked, actually asked him if he wanted to join today. He said he'll be back next week. So maybe we'll do the Forks building stream next week. But he said I need to give him more notice than like one hour if I wanted I want him on the stream. So which is fair enough because I was like, he came home from work like super tired. I was like, oh hey, do you want to do a stream in an hour? He's like, you're streaming. <laughs> Bless him. So um, yes, I'll. He said he'll be back next week. So. Don't worry, BFAP. He misses you too. <laughs> there are so many Lego plans and not enough money, says Purple Shroom. Oh my gosh. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that just the truth? <laughs> just saying some hi. I, was, I went to Florida in 2016, so I haven't done uh, Star Wars Land yet. I was supposed to go last year, but you know, COVID. I know, COVID. <laughs> Um, yes, <laughs> Bifa said, I cried the second I didn't see Ben. I know, it must have been terribly heartbreaking for you. Really hard. <laughs> um, tell him no more excuses, lol. <laughs> Look, he didn't have time to beautify himself. Um, <laughs> right, let's just, um, let's just get on with some building a moment. There we are. I am falling behind. I was doing really well so far actually, but just getting this getting this lovely sofa ready for some serious chilling. If I can put this together. There we are. I put, I put these wrong around because notice that. Typical, typical. There we are. Um there we go. So far, cool. cool. In and around San Francisco, it's taken one and a half to two hours just to commute to work because the cost of living is so expensive. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, that's kind of more normal around here as well. Because if you have, if you had to commute into Amsterdam, it would take definitely that amount of time. I feel like my. my what I said about like it takes two hours to cross the country that's obviously if there's no traffic and you can just drive on the motorways all the way but um yes no I know I remember when I moved to England for the first time um and I told my parents that I, it took me an hour and a, and a half or like an hour and 15 to drive to work and they were like you do what now but then like they cycle to work so it's just you we just have such a different idea of of distance in such a small area. Hey, where's the round brick on? Am I just looking for the wrong colour? Oh yeah, I was looking for the wrong colour. It is dark brown, not reddish brown. Tut tut. See you later, Gogo Studio. Thanks for joining. Good to have you all here. So what what um, Harry Potter sets sets have you guys bought? Like any? Are you getting any? Um, are you waiting for deliveries? Because I feel like there's some people still waiting for deliveries. 
be fair sad. An hour to get to work would have just quit my job. Yeah, it's fine actually. I quite like the commute because I um I had to drive basically across the Cotswolds in England, which is a super pretty picturesque area. So it was just kind of like a tourist trip every day. It's so pretty. But luckily not on the actual tourist road, so I didn't have to contend with actual tourists um, being slow. Which is ideal. Oh, I've got a little turrand. How cute. Kind of sits over this chair weirdly, you know. Right? Yeah, I feel that's fine. Oh no, I bent the instructions. Sad times. I like these streams because loads of Ethel's getting really excited about Lego or watching Johanna build Lego and chat. <laughs> I mean, what more could you want in life? See? This is why I really wanted to stream yesterday, because I just wanted to have a chat with you all and just get excited about Lego because um, generally when you start talking about Lego to random other adults in your life, they just go, isn't that, isn't that kid's toy? <laughs> so, um... To be fair though, I probably, I'm probably way too open about like how obsessed I am with Lego to other people in my life. They probably must think I'm crazy behind my back, but they're probably not wrong either. Max said last purchase was the astronomy, uh, astronomy tower, I love it. I haven't actually got that set. Um, I mean, obviously I'm going to get it at some point, but I haven't got it right now. The, um, the minifigs that come with that look really good, and I really would like those. They look very pretty. They, oh my god, I swear, I don't know, can you hear my laptop? Because it's intense. I'm going to see if I can tilt it a little bit so it doesn't, it can maybe get rid of the heat a little bit better, but oh my god. I think it's off, I think it's off for a little fly around soon at this rate. I'm waiting to steal all the new Harry Potter sets, so yeah. <laughs> Uh, nothing is pretty enough for me to drive an hour. You haven't seen the Cotswolds yet. Um, <laughs> oh my god, you're magic. I've just had a delivery notification for tomorrow as you said that. <laughs> Look, I, I'm on the in I've got inside information, Kerry. <laughs> oh, that's awesome though. That's the best news. The most exciting times. That should be Polyjuice mistake. Ooh, okay, yeah. Polyjuice mistake. Polyjuice potion mistake. That's such a cool set as well. Still have that in my to build pile. It's exciting. Um, do I do really like the look of that set? It's so adorable. Yes, it lines up. Woohoo! On to the really cute little tarant. I feel like I'm getting better at multitasking, though when you ask really good questions I get distracted and I start giving really long, long answers. <laughs> Lego adults are the best. Yes, absolutely. Just embracing the Lego life. <laughs> what do I think of the haunted house, asked Patrick? Um, I think it's really cool. I, um, I remember when I first got into Lego and went to the Lego store in Cardiff, because we, the Bristol one didn't exist at the time. Um, and I saw it, it's the first time I saw the 18 plus style packaging and I was like, oh my gosh, this set looks so cool. Um, it's massive, like the box looked really slick. So I really, really liked it. The one reason I probably won't get it is because it's huge, but also because like, I haven't really got an amusement park, and because, like, the main feature of the set is, like, the elevator drop feature, um, it just doesn't really seem something that, um, yeah, I just don't really have the option to really buy it or, like, display it well enough. To be really honest, I don't even really know where I'm going to display every single thing from the Harry Potter wave that I've bought this time. So, um, maybe, maybe I'll have to expand the display situation to downstairs because I'm just running out. I'm sure Ben will be thrilled. You still be listening to the stream somewhere going like, oh my god, it's gonna take over. Also, the really funny thing is, because of all the lockdowns, the on there's only one person that isn't me or Ben that's seen the Lego collection in real life. So all the people that, oh, all the people, long list, we, we don't have that many house guests, but like, the people that have seen our house, 
that was all before Lego happened. So I feel like there's a, there's a shock going to happen to it for some people when they visit our house again, because it's just been taken over by Lego. But then I had one person come see it and she absolutely, she was like, oh my God, this is so amazing. So yeah, she was really impressed. So I was like, hell yeah, it's amazing. It only cost me a small fortune. As the program of Lego is changing more and more every year, it's getting clearer that there are many more Ethels than actual kids. I think it's probably still quite a good split. But yeah, there's definitely, I mean, they're definitely aware of like that massive Ethel following. So um, I'm glad they, I'm glad they're catering to us as well. It's nice to have like sets dedicated to it as well. Um... Also, if you're watching the stream and you're liking it, please give the stream a like. I still feel weird saying that, but it really helps. <laughs> um, Hello Spartan said, I've got to go do some gardening. Alrighty, see you later. Um, Lego adults are creepy in my books. <laughs> As a 22 year old, very adult, I can confirm I'm very creepy. <laughs> I pre-ordered pre way back when uh, to top up free delivery, won't be doing that again as it's taken so long. Yeah, that's Curry, that's kind of why I didn't pre order anything because it said it will ship from um, from January 1st, but I was like, yeah, but it comes out on January 1st, so I know there's going to be massive hype, but like, I want it on that day, I don't want it to ship from that date. I wish it was like when you pre order books and the book will arrive on the day it releases, like, that's too much nicer, but um, yeah. I mean, it kind of makes sense that it doesn't. I feel like that book model's been changed recently as well. Do you think Cinevidia's Love Goods house would work as a set in 2022? Since for now, we can assume that next year's wave will revolve around Deathly Hallows. Point one, yes, I would really hope it's going to be um, Deathly Hallows. And yes, I think it's really cool. There is, um, oh gosh, what's he called? Is it Martin Lego Design? I feel like it's him. He did a really amazing mock of that. So if you want to check him out on Instagram, um, it's really, really cool because obviously it's a really awkward shape, like round buildings in Lego, pardon, in Lego are really diff um, difficult to do. So I really recommend checking that build out because it's very cool. So if Lego is going to release something like that, I will be super pleased. If they don't, I would definitely contemplate building that mock because it's just really unique looking. So yeah, that'd be really, really cool. I'm hoping that Lego is remaking some of the Lord of the Rings set. Especially when the TV series is coming out, it would be perfect timing. Um, I've, I've spoken about this before. I would 100% love for them to do that. I am very sceptical that they will, though. I mean, they own the license, but because Amazon is making this TV series, I don't know if the license would be the same. But because I think... Point one, I'm not excited about the series because I feel like it's very likely that they're going to like not do a very good job. But also, um, I feel like it's going to be very more, much more adult themed than like Lord of the Rings was ever meant to be. Um, I'm very apprehensive about that. But also, I feel like it's definitely not very um, compatible with Lego's brand values, and therefore I'm very um, skeptical that they will redo it. But don't get me wrong, I would give a lot for Lego to redo Lord of the Rings scenes because the sets are so expensive now. Like I have. I have my little Council of Elrond here, which I was really, really lucky to find for a decent price. But I think this set was originally like 30 or 25 pounds and I got it for like 45. And then like quite a lot of the figures in here are just ones that I found individually for really good prices or like my Aragorn doesn't have the right face and stuff because it's just, it's just really expensive. I mean, I don't think that it's near, well, depending on what you're looking for, but it's not near what like some of the retired Star Wars stuff goes for. but. It isn't, it isn't pretty, so I'd love them to do it, but I just, I just don't think it will happen, you know. Don't want to get my hopes up, is basically what I'm saying. <laughs> right. Tina said she's very excited to see that in real life. Yes, it'd be so nice to have you here and, like, show you the Lego room. That'd be amazing. Um... I'd love the Love Good House, that would be awesome, says Carrie. Yeah, I, it'd be super cool. Still works in paradise, I said, haha, that's the same for my house too, now drowned in Lego. <laughs> oh, what the pandemic has done to us all. 
Brickapick said, I get my friends saying that, saying, oh, my kids would love your house. Kids? They're not allowed to touch it. <laughs> uh, so true. Luckily, I mean, I'm still at, like around a lot of adults generally and none of them start, like none of them have kids yet. So I don't have the chance that kids are going to come in here and touch things. I don't know how I'd feel about that, actually. I, f I don't know if I'd be like on edge if they were to start touching things because I am very purposely from the very start I've started being like it's Lego if it falls you can just put it back together because I don't want to become like too paranoid about it but it's actually okay I think but I think yeah if there's actual kids that would like take things apart like be in here to play I probably especially with the Lord of the Ring sets I'd probably be a bit like oh no please oh hi throw to the wolves how you doing nice to have you here How many rooms is my house? Will there be another Lego room? So it used to have, so technically it's a three bed house, but this counts as a bedroom. And it's like, I can touch, I pretty much can touch the walls either side. So that gives you an idea of how small it is. Um, or maybe I'm just ginormous, who knows. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just a typically English house, but it is technically three bedroom. So there is a second room. Um, that currently is our office because obviously because of COVID there's a lot of home working so we need that how uh, that room to, to work in There is an opportunity the problem is we need and um, we need a spare bed in there for when we have guests because obviously being Dutch I have When people visit me generally they also need to stay the night So we need to have a spare bedroom in there So there's not a lot of display room We have been contemplating asking the landlord if we're allowed to put big shelves up because if we could use one wall to just put shelves up So it doesn't stand on the floor and take away space there we could actually display quite a lot in there but the walls are really like bad quality and like really flimsy because it's mostly plasterboard so it's not ideal and also I feel like if we ask permission we'll probably have to pay for it to be put back and because we're not planning on being here for very long anymore we've been here four years um I don't think that's the best idea but you know there is chances are I'm gonna have to be able to display it somewhere so yeah Lego, uh, Danny Bob says, so you think it'll be more like Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings? I'm concerned it will be, basically, because of the rumours coming out. I've been following this a little bit, but then I stopped following it because I started to be too down about it. But it sounds like, because um, they hired like an intimacy coach, which doesn't sound great to me, because I feel like when you read the books, that's just not stuff that really happens. It's not talked about, it's not hinted at really, because it's very... It's written in a certain time and it has that sort of feel to it and it's, I don't know, I just don't want it to become a Game of Thrones. I think the treatment given to a lot of popular TV series these times, especially if you aim them at adults, in like the current climate is just not really suitable for Lord of the Rings. And also because they're setting this series in the second age where there is actually not that much source material from actual Tolkien, um, I kind of feel like they have too much space to do their own thing, whereas they may ruin some of the amazing characters there, like Calibrim Roar and stuff, who I absolutely love. So, I don't know. I don't have my, I don't have high hopes. And I think in general, when you go into the Lord of the Rings fandom, I think a lot of people are very apprehensive about it. Anyway, you can tell I'm a massive Lord of the Rings nerd. Lord of the Rings is something I've gotten massively into um, over over the second lockdown. Like I've read the whole summer really, and then I started reading all the background books and stuff as well. Like, um, also if you if you're a Lord of the Rings nerd. Um, and you haven't heard of Nerd of the Rings yet, the YouTube channel, I urge you to check it out because it's amazing. Um, he's got such an amazing voice and he does, do, does amazing like um, videos. Next, I'm very skeptical about the TV series as well. I started to pick up some figures at the start of the year, but they are so expensive. Some figures cost more than the actual set used to cost. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, I think that's why, like, for example, the Council of Elrond is really expensive because Arwen's minifigure goes for 15, which, if you're a really hardcore Star Wars collector, I know probably doesn't sound as much because there are some Star Wars figures that cost crazy amounts. But in general, £20 or something for a plastic minifigure is a lot of money. Um, convert the attic. <laughs> yes. Uh, I have tons of nie uh, nieces and nephews and I have a small area des designated for them to play. No touching the display shelves. That's a very sensible thing. Also, I started watching your videos today and I really like your shelves. They're so, like, they're very visually pleasing. You've done an amazing job displaying that. Um, also, back to the convert the attic comment. We live rented, so we couldn't do that. But if this was our house, that would definitely be a thought. 
Imagine like just peeping your head into the attic and just going, oh my God, there's Lego everywhere. The dream. Sometimes when Lego falls, it can crack knowing from experience. Yeah, no, I know. I mean, I would rather have it not fall, but I try not to get too um, concerned about the Lego because I feel like if I start getting really worried about the condition of it and everything, I'm just going to go a bit insane. So it's like, you know, because sometimes Ben came in here and he's like, oh, I don't want to touch anything, I don't want to break anything. And I'm like, no, it's fine. It's Lego. If it breaks, it breaks. And also Bricklinks exists. So if something does crack, you can generally buy it as a replacement part, which isn't ideal, but it's an option. It's an option. Since what age have um, have you been into Lego? So, so I've been into Lego again as an adult since August last year, so not very long. So I'm 25 at the minute, so yeah, I'm 25. So I was 24 at the time, but pretty much 25. But I was when I was like 10, I was really into Lego as well as a child. So at the time that I started reading Harry Potter, really getting into those books, um, like the films were coming out, like all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I was, I was a really massive fan then. And the Lego that I did have was all Harry Potter Lego. I, I didn't ever have any other uh, set. I know that my nephew, is it called? No, it's my cousin. Cousin's the right word. My cousin had, um, have I done it? Wrong word, yes. My cousin had a Lego city in the attic, which was really cool. But at the time I was like, I don't know. I think in my head, everything apart from Harry Potter Lego was for boys. I don't know where I had that impression. I feel like that was just like commonly accepted in society at the time. But I really love my um, Harry Potter Lego, absolutely adored it. And the other two cousins that I had that were into Lego were actually also boys, so I feel like it was a bit of like a boyish thing to be into at the time. But then I sold it as a teenager, but I've, I'm back, I'm collecting again, and I'm going mad. Woohoo! Every time I do woohoo, I just think of Brixie. Like, when I, I don't know if you've noticed when you watch my vlogs, but when I go Lego shopping, I can't help but doing, I'm going Lego shopping, woohoo! <laughs> It just happens. I've watched too many of his videos. <laughs> um, Patrick says, are you afraid of moving Legos when you move? Uh, yeah, it wouldn't be ideal. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. The battery is low. Hold on. I need to get a new battery. The battery. There always seems to be something that happens. I'm going to just do this. You hold on. I'm not going anywhere. back we're back oh god i feel like this is becoming a tradition i actually knew the battery would run out because um i started streaming and my battery was really low so i said to ben i need a new one and he gave me one but it wasn't the panasonic brand one so i was like oh god this is totally gonna run out <laughs> oh my god, finally building. Cool to have a stream after college. Much love from Holland. Oh, hi! I didn't know you were from Holland. Water barn tropicals. <laughs> da, 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 da. Rosie. I wish I kept some of the old Lord's Ring sets, yeah. I mean, I never owned them, so at least I don't regret getting rid of them, but they are some fantastic sets, absolutely. Um, and very, very expensive now, damn it. I'm, Ben's brother Adam has the Tower of Orthanc and... I look, every time I'm at, at his parents' house, I'm just that like, oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> if you had to get rid of any set you have, which one would it be? Oh, actually, it's a really interesting question, because that's something I've been thinking about recently, because I'm obviously running out of space, so I was like, is there anything I can sell to make some money? Is there anything that I could get rid of to, you know, help with things? But... I couldn't really think of anything that I'd get rid of. I have I have gotten rid of some brick heads because I started. Oh, sorry, my uh, my phone is just buzzing. Apologies, but um, I was thinking about potentially getting rid of some brick heads because I started getting just some random ones. So I had a um, Jack Sparrow that I got rid of and a Chewbacca that I got rid of because though I liked both of them, I was like, I'm not really collecting brick heads, nor do I have more that fit with them. So. I'm just gonna get rid of those and I've, I, I'm contemplating getting rid of like the spooky brickhead and the witch brickhead and the nutcracker brickhead 
even though I really like them, but pretty much at the minute everything I own is something I want to keep. So I'm literally just looking around like, is there anything that really isn't anything I'd get rid of? If, like, if I'd been forced to, like, sell something, I possibly would get rid of the 2018 to 2020 castle bits. As much as I absolutely love the interiors, I feel like that's the one that I've least, like, worked with. But I think if I had more display room, those would be the sets that I would try and see if I could mo uh, mod, mock. Because I would really like to have the space to have the Harry Potter 2018 to 2020 castle sit somewhere so I can actually start connecting it like loads of awesome people on um, on Instagram day because that's a dream but space at the minute is, is restricting that for sure um what's your Harry Potter books ranked from best to worst oh cool question um hmm. so I think it's changed but I used to say that like the Order of the Phoenix is my least favourite one. I think as I got on older I've appreciated that more. I think I read it when I was still a child but when I became a teenager I appreciated it more because you know I think Harry's struggles are quite typical of, of teenagers like more the angsty feeling that I had myself as well whereas as a child I was like he seems to be whinging like but I didn't really appreciate like how you feel. So, um, also I finished this, this book, oh sorry I said that and then I noticed that I have two things left over. Um, my favourite, I mean the best reading experience I had, I'm just going off like when I read them for the first time, so the best reading experience I had was Deathly Hallows because I remember buying that book, reading it and just going, wow! Because like I remember like when they were like, oh we need to find this locket, oh my god! Remember, there was this locket when we cleaned out the house in the Order of the Phoenix book and there was an, a locket that nobody could open and I was like, oh my god, they mentioned it and I like went to the fifth book and like leafed through it and found that passage. It was like, oh, like the, it was there all along. So um, I loved reading the Deathly Hallows first. I have, I'm really nostalgic for the first few, but I think off the top of my head right now, but this may change, Order of the Phoenix, my least favourite, Deathly Hallows, my favourite. Um, I really like the Half Blood Prince as well, though, and I really like that Prison of Azkaban movie. I think that's a, has a really good mood. Um, so dusting Lego, my old Harry Potter Lego sets have been collecting dust. Oh yes, I noticed that I needed to do some dusting. Actually, it's crazy how quickly they gain dust. I'm glad that I have quite a few of them in a display cabinet. Oh my gosh, in a display cabinet where I don't have to do that. I've just noticed something fell over that I need to fix. Um, did you say you are 25? Yes, yes I am 25. I'll be 26 in September. Um, I always get worried that it won't come back when you change the battery, lol. Yeah, <laughs> it's always so nerve-wracking to do it, but also like, it was either going to cut out or I change the battery, so. So I've been looking into battery packs that, um, that last all day, just ordered one. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> let me know if you have tips on batteries, that'd be amazing. Um, I think there is a way, I mean this is a really really old camera, it's probably like six or seven years old so I think, but there's ways I think to actually um, connect it to power whilst you're streaming but I haven't got the kit. Actually I'm really lucky because Ben went to film school so he had a lot of equipment from his course and from some of his freelance work that he did after so like the streaming kit I'm using is six years old because Ben happened to have it. The lights I'm using are from Ben's like work back in the day, they were really old. I'm using his old camera that's like definitely not the best anymore but you know like I was really really lucky that I had quite a lot of this equipment available to me but yeah I really need to start investing in like getting some stuff that doesn't cut out on me or is seven years old. Um, but yeah any tips let me know because um, I was thinking if I ever have the chance to monetize and like have some super chats and like some features I'd love to have like a stream where you have some stuff on the screen because that looks really cool but there's so much out there, it's it's a bit overwhelming. <laughs> <coughs> oh, Night Night Harry Potter Mad, sorry, just noticed. I wouldn't sell, like, the big one up there, like, the, the micro skill hot cords. No, 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 but I would sell some of the, um, at the moment, I probably won't, but at the moment I'd sell some of the, um, of the Hogwarts pieces like my least favorite Hogwarts piece from before was the Whomping Willow set. I love the Whomping Willow in the car I just don't like the, Hulk, the Hogwarts piece that comes with it. 
So yeah. I need to I need to get on, sorry. <laughs> I noticed I'm just scrolling and not building and everybody's like, what are you doing man? Right. Let's get on with this. Oh! Oh there's a, there's four tiles in this set. Please be different. It's different! <laughs> it's different guys. Oh, sorry, I just realized there was a fourth one. So this is I think it's Dumbledore. Awesome, awesome. Funny story, um, when I went to the Warner Brothers Studio Tour London, way back when, when did I go, like 2015, 20, no, probably before then, basically the year it opened, I bought a chocolate frog from the gift shop and my first um, chocolate frog card in there was Dumbledore and I was like, oh my god, just like Harry Potter, I got really excited, um, a bit silly. <laughs> I am indeed not 30 BFAB, but you know, thank you. <laughs> Um, looking back at it now, there are so many sets that I could have picked up back in the day that go for a fortune now. For example, uh, Back to the Future set. Yeah, I mean, I sometimes torture myself going back and going, oh, I could have picked up all these sets. But then also at the same time, I mean, I wasn't into Lego, so there was literally no moment on earth where I was going to get, the, like, I was going to buy Lego sets. I just can't blame myself for not picking things up because... I, I didn't know they existed, but I, oh my gosh, I wish, I wish I'd picked up Le uh, Lord of the Rings fan things. Um, it's going to say 40. Yeah, I mean, I'm 70 at heart, so. I, I listened to Classic FM, was that what gave it away? <laughs> I actually just got my first Brickheads, and the, it's the Baby Yoda one. Now I've got a little obsessed w with the Harry Potter ones. Yeah, I mean, I do really like Brickheads, which is why I started getting a few, but I think it's just, um, I haven't got the display room and I was like either I commit to getting all of them or I just leave this bit because I'm, I'm too dedicated to it. Um, but I have the Brickheads, I have Albus, Harry, Hermione, Ron from like the first time they did Brickheads back in the day. Also I've got Dean! Yay! A new Dean! Applause! Applause! I like his coat actually. It's really nice. I definitely wouldn't mind another um, torso. Very cute. Um, I'm just going to put Ross Murphy in the set because I feel like I need to have some people in the set to make it interesting. There we go. There we go. <laughs> um, how you seem so mature for your age. I'm only a few years old. <laughs> I'm still a child. I mean, I'm building Lego here, so I take that for what you will. Um, I think moving countries does have, make you mature a little bit. And the fact that I'm, sometimes I'm a bit, it's a bit crazy because I feel like I feel like a child very often but then I'm also planning to get married and like buying a house and all that sort of really adult stuff so it's like yeah it's a bit crazy sometimes I'm like oh my gosh I'm like two people at the same time but don't we all like you know when you're a child and you look at adults and you're like wow they know what they're doing. I want to be an adult. And then you become older and you're like, oh, maybe I'm just not old enough. Like, all the adults seem to know what they're doing. And then it just keeps going. And then, like, I asked my mum recently and she's like, nah, I still don't know what I'm doing. And I was like, yeah, I suspected that. <laughs> um. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just reading the chat. <laughs> BFAP has got the Sorcerer's Stone. <laughs> Must be it. Your secret has <laughs> been revealed. <laughs> How did you get the stickers for your ramen set? Well, what an excellent question. So, um, I may, I may have been a little bit naughty and um, basically I scoured the entire internet to see if I could buy it anywhere because I just needed a sticker sheet. I was like, I'm willing to pay for it. Please give it to me. And nowhere in the UK was selling it. Nowhere in Europe was selling it. I couldn't find it anywhere. So I was like, okay, maybe there's counterfeits. Maybe some counterfeits sell it. Or like, you know, reproduction. Some, some companies sell reproduction Lego stickers for when they're retired. Couldn't find it. So then I just emailed Lego and I was like, hey, um, is there any way I could buy the sticker sheet from you? And they were like, oh, it's okay, we'll just send it to you. And I was like, thank you. So I got one of the sticker sheets from Lego. 
um, because they send it to me, which I feel like I can't say you should do because that's not really officially what you're meant to be doing, but that's how I got the Monkey Kid Ramen Shop stickers. Um, because I couldn't buy it anywhere. Generally, I tried, I offered to pay for them um, to Lego and they just send them, which is awesome. Um, admittedly, I spend quite a lot of money with Lego, so it's not like they don't get my money anyway. Um, <laughs> I wish I could retire and play with Lego all day. Yes, I feel that. That would be amazing. By the time we're like likely to retire though, we're probably having to work till we're like 75 or something. There won't be a retirement budget for us. We'll still be paying off the pandemic debt. You built your Lego city during lockdown. Yeah, I started, um, so basically during the first lockdown, like from, from March, I was put on furlough and then I was made redundant. So I kind of picked up new hobbies and kind of kept myself busy whilst I was looking for a new job. And then I was very lucky to find one relatively quickly, I have to say, but um, I picked up Lego, the Lego hobby whilst I was um, looking for a job and started. And then like, you can see, but I didn't start with a Lego city straight away. I was just gonna, if you look at my old videos, I was like, it's fine. I'm just gonna like only buy like Harry Potter stuff. Um, and then literally like two months later or something, I went, <laughs> I bought modulus, so. It's kind of gone a bit out of hand and stuff, but I think it's definitely because of like uh, lockdown because there weren't really many demands on my time outside from the outside world you know you couldn't see anybody anyway so I just really focused on like um on Lego and it was the best and it's made me very very happy and I've met so many awesome people for it as well all of you guys and like lots of people on Instagram so I was talking to my mum yesterday about it actually because I hadn't really mentioned to them that I was doing YouTube so I was like oh I seem to be like I just hit a thousand subscribers maybe I should just mention I'm do this is something I do um, and my mum was like trying to understand it, but she's like, it's okay, it's not, if it makes you happy, that's all good. <laughs> Bless her. Um, but yeah, don't we all want to retire? <laughs> uh, it'll be, <laughs> be fam, it'll be like one of those situations like in Friends where, you know, Rachel, like Ross says the wrong name at the Ulsa. That'd be awkward. Maybe this works with sets too, lol. Like I can't find my diagonally, is there any chance? <laughs> yeah, no, worth a shot, <laughs> Max. Um. Yeah, I started watching your channel due to Harry Potter and then you went all modular. Yeah, I know. I mean, obviously I've gone back to Harry Potter and now new sets have come out. And I, So actually, the reason I started my channel is point one, because I wanted to document my collecting journey, but because I had just bought that vintage like um, set box from the Netherlands and I was like, oh, it'd be really cool to make videos about this because like, you know, I bought 800 euros worth of Lego um, seems like quite a good YouTube title and then I, I'm still waiting for that box but I have the I have the channel now so I re honestly guys I'm so looking forward to having that and sharing that journey with you because it's going to be so much fun but I'm still waiting I'm still waiting for it we tried contemplating sending it from the Netherlands to here, but because of Brexit, like the postage is actually insane. Because obviously Lego's quite heavy and like the postage was like eye-wateringly expensive. So we're like, okay, that's that's not really an option, sadly. Also, um I've just added this picture of um hogs 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 mead warts. That's great, Joanna. Um, of Hogwarts to this set and it's really cute. I know I warn everybody that wants this set that there's a lot of stickers but they do add a lot of really lovely detail I have to say. Yeah Lego are amazing for replacing files. How do you, um, how do your placement files take how long do they take to come to you? Recently it takes ages for them to get to me in Ireland. Yeah um so they sent me the replacement stickers for Hogsmeade. I called them today and they said it'll take like seven to then to then to ten. <laughs> Speech, Johanna, fantastic. Um seven to ten working days, so quite a long time. So don't lose things. If you want them quickly. 
Um, I mean, obviously for me, it was just a thing that needed to be replaced because I'd ruined it. But I can imagine if you miss a part from a set and you have to wait that long before you can continue to build, that must be really annoying. But luckily that's never happened to me, so fingers crossed that won't happen either. Where is this, where is this triangle? Oh, there it is. Ooh, it's the last sticker! Wow. Wow. The last sticker. Right, silence in the theatre, please. There we go. That was actually not too bad. I think I did okay. Will I replace this with real broomsticks? Yes, yes, I think I will. Because it needs it. Cool. You're all simping for Ben. <laughs> Chango was meant to replace Ninjago as an action theme, but that's say that didn't quite work. No, it was, I mean, Chango was around for quite a long time there, wasn't it? Because Chima, sorry. Um, Can't wait until the box of Harry Potter Lego arrives. The excitement is real. Yeah, honestly. I mean, I've been, I was going to keep it a secret, but obviously I've been talking about it quite a lot on um, on stream. It's just because I've been waiting for this for so long. Like, um, it's just so cool. Also, I spend a lot of money on that. So, but at this point, like, I spent that money such a long time ago. It doesn't even really feel real. So I really want to just, um, I just really want to share that with you guys. It's just so cool. But I'm still waiting. Stupid COVID, keeping international families apart. So rubbish. But what can you do? What can you do? Nothing much. Roll with the punches. And anyway, I have a nice channel now. So like when I make these videos, then some people will actually get to see them. So that's, that's good, right? Right. Turn this over. Put a four by four there. Uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> Replacing Ninjago is a dangerous thing to do. It killed Chima, a monkey kid. Who's next? I don't know if it killed Monkey Kid though, because I feel like Monkey Kid seems to be much more focused on like Asian markets. <laughs> because I tried watching, because I wanted to watch the Monkey Kid, um, like, what was it called? Like, um, cartoons. And they were all in Japanese, and I tried turning the captions on, and uh, they definitely did not translate correctly. So <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess, I guess this is not for me. But it looked so cool. I actually really loved it. How is the build for Ninjago City Gardens? Oh my god, Ninjago City Gardens. I mean, I have a whole video dedicated on this where I'm just like loving on this set, but I love Ninjago City Gardens. I have no Ninjago sets, I know very little about it. All I know about it is that when I was an au pair I watched it a little bit with my au pair child, but never really, um, but never really myself. It was before I was into Lego as well, so like I had no contest, contest, context. But I noticed when I got back into Lego I saw the Ninjago City set and I was like, God, oh, this is beautiful, I really want to buy this. And then I was super lucky because then they released Ninjago City Gardens. And I love the build. Every single bag is different. They're all beautiful. The building techniques are fantastic. The colours are amazing. I love that set. But I mean, I did go into that with no expectations really, apart from that I liked the look of it. But yeah, really, really love that. If you don't, if you want it, but you're not sure, I can definitely recommend it. Pro tip, use a brick separator to apply stickers. Yeah, I do some, I do sometimes. I've started doing it more, to be honest. Because it doesn't have your like um, fingerprints on it then, but uh, I think when I'm on stream, I just do it with my hands because like that's just how I do it basically. But I'm, so I I have the did I've had to do tips a few times now, and I'm like, yeah, it's better. It's easier to get it straight when you use the brick separator. Oh hi, Apps Bricks, how are you doing? Welcome. Okay, Tina, slap legger. Um. It, <laughs> oh, all, all wishing a good night in Dutch. <laughs> That's very nice. Right, I feel like this is going to be a very similar build. The light is making it hard to see the instructions. The glare is a bit bad. <laughs> Ninjago City looks great, connected to gardens and docks. Yes, yes, I want them all. Sadly, because Ninjago City Gardens came out and like 
um, Ninjago City was such an old set, the, the value of that retired one went up so much. Because I actually, before Ninjago City Gardens was announced, I had a few second-hand sets that were listed on um, Facebook Marketplace for like £300, like, l like listed, like saved, because I was like, I want these, I'll probably get them, I'll just see, you know, I'll see what happens. Um, and then like that's Ninjago City Gardens was announced and they were gone the next day and then the value of those sets went up super super quickly so I was very sad very sad so basically missed out but then you know you can't have it all right that's what I tell myself anyway one day maybe I haven't got the room for it at the minute either one day when I have a bigger Lego city I've been thinking about adding a third um, somebody on my channel said like oh can you make a third level I can't remember who it was, and that's never that that's that thought has stuck to my head, and I'm like I'm contemplating adding a third level to the city because I was like that would be really cool. Oh no, oh no, right. Let's try that again. There we go. There we go. It's getting it's coming together. I like the shape of it actually. It's very pleasing. Very pleasing. Can we have a segment on your channel where Ben teaches people on how to be more attractive? I'll see if you set, a, set up a, set, a second channel. Workout tips. <laughs> I'm not even going to look at the gardens too close in case it starts something. Kerry, that's the spirit. If you don't, if you don't look, it's not going to hurt you. <laughs> Um, I looked very close and then I decided I needed them, which hurt my wallet, so it's better not to look. It's a bit like the modulars, I shouldn't have looked at those because they then broke my, broke the bank. They're gorgeous though. Hmm. Personally thing that was definitely unnecessary stretching the theme, it was meant to end after the second season and then in 2020. But hey, but they never changed or ended a running system, I guess. I'm assuming you talk about Ninjago, um, Max. I know very little about Ninjago. I know there's a lot of really big fans of it, though. Like, surprisingly so. I like the sets that came out this um, this summer. They were really cool, actually. They looked... Um, like, the water-themed ones are beautiful. Like, the details in those dragons are, like, fantastic. If I had the room and the budget to just throw at something that I am not massively connected to, I was I would be tempted. I would be tempted. Right. I feel like attaching these hinges to each other just means that I'm at, at risk of breaking things. So if if this Lego building just falls apart a minute, you know why. Come on. No. What am I doing wrong? Um, I, I launched something away. Oh, here it is. Okay. Okay, let's try that again. Have I got this correct? Yes, I filled it correctly. Come on. And if the else love attaching hinges to themselves because I feel like I maybe dislike attaching hinges more than I dislike stickers. Controversial opinions. Controversial opinions with Johanna. I was hooking it wrong. Oh, come on. Yes, it's attached! Gosh, that was so much harder than I was anticipating. You could make a third level which is drilled into the side of your unit and have one leg next to your gardens. Yeah, so, because of, I think you guys at this point know that I can't put shelves up into the wall because of it being a rented house. Somebody actually said you could also make like an L-shaped piece of wood so you can lie it on top of your calyx unit and then just extend it and exactly what you say, have a pillar. Um, I don't... Actually, it could sit where Ninjago City is sitting at the minute. So there is actually some opportunities for me to do something really creative, but you know what happens when you have more space? You get more Lego to fill it, which is just unnecessary, <laughs> unnecessary encouragement. 
But to be honest, knowing myself, I think that's gonna happen at some point. Max said Ninjago said my Lego addiction in 2010 uh, all started with an innocent 10 year set. <laughs> mine, mine started with the, the innocent Room of Requirement set that I bought for 13.50. So start small and then spend the big, big bucks later, basically. <clears> How <throat> you can tell my voice is going a little bit. Oh god. Will they have a voice tomorrow? We'll find out. Um, I'm on another, another stream tomorrow on a different channel, but I might not have a voice left then. <laughs> Sorry, Greg. <laughs> I'll do my best. I'll take some honey before I go to bed. Howdy, Amy. How are you doing? Welcome. Um, I am, I'm nearing the end of this build, but I'm just um, I'm just having some fights with the hinges. But I keep breaking, as you can hear. Oh, come on, I'm so close. Don't be mean to me. Please, can you just touch? That was, that was actually better. I did better there. As much as there was a lot of breaking Lego and loud noises, it is attached. May I have some applause, please? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I did it! Oh my god, that reminds me of that Dora song. We did it! We did it! I've not finished the build yet. But I got too excited. Um, there we go. More hinges! More hinges! My enemy. You could totally fit a small bed in that room and a desk. Move into the bigger room. Go on, you know you want to. This actually used to be the spare bedroom, to be fair. Um, it's just that we both need a desk. Um, we both need our computers to work from home. Um, so we have like a long desk under the window, which works quite well. And then we have the bed in there as well, which is a sofa bed. So it's currently just as, an, as a sofa. But yeah, this just about fits a bed. It literally fills pretty much the entire room. Um, but it wouldn't fit the bed and two computers. <laughs> it hardly fitted both our computers to start with, so. And don't encourage, Ben's just, if he was listening, he'd be like, don't encourage her. Do not encourage her. To be fair, I mean, when the spare bedroom was in the bigger room still on its own, I started my Lego collection there. If you look at my oldest videos, like, they're all shot in the bigger room. Um, it was just that the bed was, um, like, the focal point of the room, which is a bit of a... Which is not what I can have if, I, if I'm taking that back as a Lego room. I can't have any other furniture in there but desks and display units. Basically, if you want to come visit me, I should just tell you that there's no room in this house. You have to sleep on the sofa. <laughs> Maybe we should just get a sofa bed. Um, like an actual sofa, a nice sofa bed downstairs. But um, I feel like I'd get some protests. <laughs> Clap, clap, clap. Thank you, Purple Shroom. Thank you. Amy as well. Thank you so much. <laughs> like the support. <laughs> um, does your Calyx shelf fit your dinner, uh, diner in a square? I was thinking of getting that one for the fishing store. Um, yes, yes it does. It basically fits one 32 by 32 base plate, one 16 by, si uh, by 32 in front, and then a 10 by 8, I think. No, a 10 by the rest of the length. So how much would that be? 16, 32, oh my god, 80, 48, so 48 studs, I guess. Um, 48 by 10 on the side. So it fits a decent amount, I think maybe with the diner. Like, the diner has this on top, like the little antenna. I think you'd have to take that off, but it would pretty much fit. Which is kind of, you can see the bookshelf in the Calyx unit, so it does fit really well. It's a good, it, it's a good budget option for displaying Lego, if you're, if you're looking for something. It's not perfect, but um, you know, when is it ever, and something ever perfect? When COVID and home working is o over, you can move rooms. I think I'm continuing to work from home for two days a week going forward, so I'll I'll continue to need my desk, um, which is good because it means that I don't have the commute, so I have more time to make videos because I obviously have a full time job as well that I need to do as well as doing YouTube. And I definitely want to put a bit more time into my channel, so it's quite useful I don't have to commute. But it does mean that I won't have won't be able to have the Lego room back. So um maybe I just have to be really nice to Ben and convince him that having Lego in the living room is a really good idea. Sorry, Ben. 
They made me do it. Think like Lego, like just remove the wall to make space. <laughs> just do major building work to your house. Why not fill the whole garden with a shed that you can just walk into? There should be there should be rooms like in the Wizarding World, small on the outside and big on the inside, just for Lego. Yes, please. If anybody is able to invent that, can you can you hurry up with that? Because I would really appreciate that right now. Um, the house needs to be bigger, but I haven't got a budget, so um, that would be great. <laughs> Right, oh, I'm nearing the end, guys. Oh my gosh. Monumentous occasion. <laughs> I hope that one day your channel makes you money so you can buy Lego. <laughs> oh, thank you. That would be the dream, to be fair. That would, that would be the dream. Make, make, my hub, make my hobby pay for itself. That would be excellent. Um... Ben writes like Ben's a coach for scootering. I don't know if you know scootering. Basically, you know, doing it's like skateboarding, but all the kids ride scooters mostly. So he um he was one of the first professional scooter riders in the UK. Like when that sport started, when he was like sixteen, so like 10, 12 years ago. Obviously, scooters have been around for much longer, but like pro scooter riding hasn't. Um, but that meant that he was being sponsored by with parts and stuff. Like he got those for free. So he was like. I had a hobby and it basically paid for itself and I was like, I would like that, that would be the dream. It would be really nice to have a hobby pay for itself, but... The, the point of this LEGO channel was just, I wanted to just keep you guys informed, I wanted to be part of the community, so, like, the money isn't really the goal, but it would be useful. Um, obviously not gonna lie, but the main point is just to have chats like this in the comments, because how awesome is that? I'm not gonna have these chats that my mum should be like, what the hell are you talking about, so... I'm just super grateful to have you guys join the channel, really. Oh my god, my throat's getting really dry. Yeah, I was thinking that I'd need to remove the pole in the top for it. Yeah, you would have to. I mean, that will be the only thing. You could even keep the blue and red, uh, blue, white and red things on it. You just have to take like the one piece off and you can just lie on the roof so you don't lose it. Uh -huh. I hope, um, I saw a cabinet like the one next to you in a charity shop a couple of months ago. I was going to get it for Lego, but it was gone by the time I went back. Oh no, that was rubbish. To be fair though, like, Ikea Calyx units are super common because I've been looking at potentially getting another one and they pop up on, like, Facebook Marketplace and, like, secondhand sites quite a lot, so you'll probably be able to find another one. Plus, like, from Ikea, they're not very expensive either. They're quite a common, common design. Oh my god, Gaz. Oh my god. What is that? It's done. Oh, it's actually, it's actually really sweet. I've just noticed that I've moved these bills. There we go. Um, it's sweet. I like it. Let me put Dean down so I don't knock him over. Hope you can see that a little bit. It's actually a little bit bigger than I thought. I feel like I say that a lot with Lego sets though, I have to say. Like, it's different when you have it in the room you built Lego in, but... It's very nice. So my plans are, in line with what I've seen other people do, to replace these windows with golden lattice, which I... Have I bought them off Bricklink? I placed an order for something of, on Bricklink today. I don't know if these are part of it, but that's the plan. And then I've also seen them make this chimney crooked. Like, you know in Diagon Alley, where they have this really nice, like, crooked chimney build um, for Ollivanders? Like, you could do something like that here with, like, hinges as well to make it a little bit more crooked and I think that's really nice and that's definitely something I want to try but it's really really sweet and McGonagall is currently the minifigure to beat as my favourite of the new line oh my god basically this set makes me so happy that Harry Potter and Lego is back like man this is all I want from Lego I want buildings I want Harry Potter buildings I really like the colour scheme they've used I love the butter beers. I wish it'd been bigger, but to be honest, I really like it. I shouldn't say too much. I'll be I'll I'll do a like chatty review style thing that I normally do on these because this is the set that I was so looking forward to, but I love it. It's very pretty. There you go. <laughs>
It's hard to get overly chatty about Lego with my hubby or family and at some point somebody will shout geek! <laughs> so I really appreciate these lives. <laughs> Yeah, it happens a lot when I tell about Lord of the Rings as well, and they're like, you can just see them glaze over you and go, sorry, sorry, I just, I went too deep again. <laughs> Kerry said it needs brooms. It does need brooms, yes. So that's another thing I want to change. I'll add brooms. Though I want to keep this, like, really nice detailing. I do like that. So I'll have to see if I can find a way to attach brooms as well as keep that. Um, I obviously have all these grand plans. I don't know how quickly they'll happen, but... You know, we have to have these plans in our diaries in the future. I feel like I always, as Lego builders, I think you always have new plans before you, um, like new plans before you have, um, you finished your old one. So I've got like about 20 going at the minute, but hey, the money makes it slow. <laughs> Drop test. Be fab. I could get hair of that woman at the, uh, bottom for a few characters. Yeah, it's really nice. I'm I'm sure it may be available on uh, bricks and pieces on Lego. I know that because it's the same hair piece that I use for my minifigure in um, in a different colour. But the brown one is definitely available to purchase on bricks and pieces. So I'm sure, I'm sure that will. Oh hi, Jill Bricks. How are you doing? Welcome. Not seen you in the stream before. That's cool. Seeing everyone rebuilding new sets while not having them myself is a bit frustrating. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. I wasn't watching any streams of people building new sets early before I had them myself either, so don't blame you. <laughs> but why not buy them? Um, Robinson, hi hiya, R Robson, sorry, apologies for saying that wrong. Um, watching from Texas, oh my gosh, how cool. Nice to have you here. I mean, I have just finished the build, I'm so sorry, but um, good to have you here anyway. Thank you so very much for everybody for joining in again. I'm glad we got to fill, we got to bring this stream to a good conclusion today when I'm feeling better, not having to run out the room for tissues, rather, but instead having to run out the room to get a battery for the camera because apparently there's always something. Um, but yes, this is very beautiful. What There will be a video coming out, so if you're not subscribed, please do. So you can come and see it when uh, <laughs> when that's ready. Ben will be back next week for those asking. He said it, he promised it to me. He felt very flattered that everybody was asking after him. Um, he'll be back next week. And we may be by, um, building either the chess set or forks because both of those will require, um, like will require his input as well. So thank you so very much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, evening, morning, if you're from Australia, but probably not. And I will see you soon. How do? Bye bye.